Hey guys, Daniel here, and in this video, I'm going to make a golden hammer out of aluminum bronze. I'm going to make the model using a, my Christmas gift, a 3D printer, and I'm going to try some new things. I'm going to put a core in the mold, and I'm going to char on my handle black to make it look cool and stuff. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. So I started off by taking a picture of the hammer that I wanted to model, and I made it using SketchUp. That wasn't the best program to use, as I learned. So I 3D printed it, and the print came out really well, but it had some other issues. It wouldn't make a model in the sand well, so I had to redesign it using Fusion 360, which I had to teach myself how to use, and then print that out. I added an angle to the sides so that it would be able to come out of the sand easily and designed it so that I could put a core of sand in it to make the hole down the middle. This would also allow me to put a design on the side. It printed out really well and all I had to do was glue some little pegs into the holes to make it ready to make a mold. Okay, so it's like super cold out here, like 17 degrees, which is cold for us because, you know, we live in a warm place. So, normally Petrobond is like super sticky and I think I lost some footage, so that's annoying. That's why we're filming this. But normally Petrobond is super sticky and it won't come through this, but right now it'll just all flow right on through. So I'm worried that the Petrobond is a little too cold to be sticky and then it might not come out of the mold right or something so I don't know so I'm almost finished making this mold and on the hammer I think the reason it didn't work last time is because I didn't have any draft it wasn't angled at all it was just straight like 90 degree angles um, so when I tried to pull it up out of the sand the sand stuck to it because it wasn't angled out like this so it would come up and so I remodeled it and put those angles on it. Hopefully now it'll come out of the mold and work well. Okay, so these things right here, um, I'm using them so that way I can put designs on the side of the hammer and still be able to make a hole. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little tube of Petrobon um, and stick it in here so that way the molten metal will flow around that uh, pillar of sand and I'll still be able to have designs on the side. Okay, so it'll make more sense once I put it in there. Man, it almost worked. Well, I guess we'll try again. So what, this will be my third attempt? Yay! So I decided to heat the sand up by leaving it in a bucket inside overnight, and it worked pretty well. I was able to make the mold, and it's right there in the bottom right corner of the screen. And then I tried to make the tube of sand, the core, but it didn't work. Well, that didn't work. But eventually, after a lot of trial and error, I was able to put it all together and make it all work. But by the end of it, my pants were just covered in mud. One pair of pants later. So I made the core, put it in, and now the mold's done. So let's start firing up the foundry. A few moments later. Okay, so it's still really cold, and even though I got the mold already and everything, I'm still having problems with the weather because my propane tank's freezing up. So I put it in this giant concrete mixing tub, and I'm gonna put some warm water in there to keep it from freezing up like this other one did. Okay, so I added some nickel, but it wasn't very interesting, so I didn't film it. But I'm gonna add some aluminum here, and what's gonna happen is, I think, the aluminum's gonna mix with the partially melted copper and make the alloy, and it's all gonna melt. 
because aluminum bronze has a lower melting point than copper itself. So hopefully that'll work. Twenty minutes later. Never mind. It took us a while to find some hickory wood to make the handle with, but we eventually found replacement handles for sledgehammers that were made of hickory. So I had to cut it and sand it down to the right size and shape. So my wedge was too thick for the hammer, and once I sanded it down a little bit thinner, it hammered in really well. So I sanded down the top here a bit so I could hammer in the metal wedge, but later on I sand it down all the way and make it flush with the metal to make it look nice.
So here I am hammering in the metal wedge, and later it actually became loose, so I had to drive the hammerhead farther down and hammer another metal wedge in, and this is this whole big ordeal, but eventually I got it tight. So at first I started trying to file it down with a rasp, but that was going a bit too slow, so I swapped over to the belt sander. So at the intersection between the handle and the head, there were these little strips of wood that had started coming out from where I hammered the head down onto the wood. So I just took a knife and cut off those little bits. And then I was trying to think of a way that I could sand the edge in between there without messing up the metal. And my mom had an idea to put duct tape on the back of some sandpaper so that it wouldn't fall apart whenever I tried to sand, and it worked really well. I'm going to use that trick again. At this point it was looking really good, but I wanted to give some sort of finish on the wood, so I decided to try and char it. And before putting a flame to my hammer, I decided to test it out on a few other pieces of wood. Yeah, it just charred. It didn't get too far thick down. I was really careful and I went really slowly, making sure to get the entire handle black. So I rubbed some boiled linseed oil on it, making sure to coat the whole thing, and that helps give it a protective finish, and it also helped to rub off any of the residual charring, but managing to still keep it black at the same time, and I really like the way it made it look. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe or check out my channel if you want to see other stuff like this. Thanks.